Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to acquire a disk image using EWF Acquire in Linux. Now the goal of EWF Acquire is usually to make um, expert witness format images or E01. So the E01 file format is a really common uh, format that a lot of tools and a lot of investigators use. Um, it does have some built-in um, consistency checking mechanisms, checksums within the actual file itself. Um, so it is pretty useful and a lot of uh, investigators or even a lot of police officers or even uh, judges or courts often want um, the, the disk images to be in E01 format. Um, yeah, so basically today I'm going to show you how to collect an E01 file from command line using uh, the tool EWF Acquire um, in uh, Ubuntu or any other uh, Linux distribution that supports it. Okay, um, so the first thing we need to do is install it and in Ubuntu, um, and I believe in Debian, you can install EWF tools. So we can do sudo apt get or apt install EWF dash tools sudo apt install ewf um, uh, to dash tools and then it should go out and download everything for us okay so now we have the newest version we can also build from source um, i'm just going to use the tools from uh, uh, from the package manager right now we can see that uh, it's installing ewf tools 2014-0608 um, i'm sure that there's actually a newer version um, but i'm just going to show you from the uh, uh, repository right now because it's fairly easy, fairly straightforward to do. So once we install EWF tools, you can type EWF and then do tab and you can see a couple um, utilities that are included in the EWF tools packages. So EWF acquire is um, what we're going to focus on today. EWF acquire stream is pretty much what it sounds like. You can uh, make a stream and send it to EWF, EWF acquire stream and it will um, uh, convert it to whatever format you're trying to save to. EW, EWF debug, EWF export, uh, info, mount. Um, I may also show you how to use it at a later date. Um, it's also quite useful. EWF info um, shows you about the disk image. It's also pretty handy. Um, EWF recover and verify. Um, verify obviously uh, checks the checksum or the, the hash value that's actually inside the disk image. So uh, expert witness format files are not like raw disk images. Raw disk images are just a bit by bit copy only, whereas expert witness files actually have a little bit of a data structure. They add some extra information in the disk image in the form of a header uh, and a footer and then some checksums in between uh, data segments. So um, yeah, there's actually just a, a couple more features. In some ways, this makes it a little bit... Um, uh, better than a raw disk image because we can actually figure out which data segment has changed if some data does change. Um, if you just have a raw disk image, um, unless you have hash values of each piece or each section of the, the raw disk image, you won't know which section has been modified if there is a data that changed. Um, of course, in digital forensics, we hope that none of this data changes, but um, it's always a possibility. So EWF formats... Um, uh, kind of supports uh, checking or doing some other verification within de data segments itself. So uh, what we want to do right now is acquire an image using EWF Acquire. So we've already installed EWF tools. We want to use EWF Acquire to um, copy a disk image. Okay. Now EWF Acquire comes with a lot of um, options. It's a really powerful tool. I'll just go through the main options right now and um, we can image a disk. So the first thing we need to do is um, list the disks that we might want to image. So the disks that are installed in this system. And there's a couple ways I can do that. The normal or a very common way, I guess I should say, in Linux to list your disks uh, from command line is to do sudo fdisk, f-d-i-s-k dash l, and that will uh, list all of the disks using the fdisk utility. Um, the problem with fdisk is that you do have to use sudo to run it to get access. And then whenever we look through here, um, let me see if I can quickly find the disk I want. So basically I want to image this um, 3.8 gigabyte, uh, uh, just a USB stick. 
um, in my system, I can see that it is assigned uh, as dev SDE. So this is the physical disk indicator in Linux. Um, it's 3.8 gigabytes, so I know that's the one that I want. Um, we can see the sector size, which might be interesting to us later. And we can see that it has here um, basically two uh, kind of like partitions, basically. So SDE1 would be uh, logical disk 1 and SDE2 would be logical disk 2. Uh, log logical disk 2 is formatted as uh, it looks like FAT, probably 32. Um, so we get a little bit of information here, but what I really am interested because I want to make a physical disk image, not a logical disk image. I want to acquire the entire USB stick not just a partition on the USB stick. So then I need to focus on uh, dev SDE, which is the indicator or the kind of the address for the physical disk. Okay, so dev SDE um, and then dev SDE one and two, um, I'm not gonna worry about too much because whenever we collect the data, we're also going to be collecting those partitions, okay? So now that I know that it's dev SDE, um, just really quickly, another way to list your disks without um, uh, uh, having access to root uh, or sudo is lsblk. So ls, list, and blk is block. And then that will tell us the uh, block devices that are available. And I hope it lists it here. Uh, yeah, so here we get a little bit more information where it's mounted at. So I have this... Um, SDD, basically all of these other ones are built into my system or their external drives. I'm interested in SDE with SDE 1 and 2, and we can see um, that SDE 1 is mounted as Linux Mint. Um, this is the volume label, actually, for this, okay, and where it's mounted at. Right, so now we know um, dev SDE is the disk that I'm inter interested in. We can list the disk with either LS block or lsblk or uh, sudo um, uh, fdisk-l. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, I'm going to clear that out. Now we want to use ewf acquire, and I think I have to use sudo, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. sudo ewf ac <laughs> ewf acquire sudo ewf acquire. And then I want to give it the device that I want to image. Now, if I just do sudo ewf acquire, it will give me a long list of all of the options uh, that I can put in uh, with ewf acquire. And um, this makes the tool really flexible, basically. Um, now, it also has kind of a menu. So if you don't fill all of these, um, all of the required values in, then it will ask you for all of the required values. So I won't go through all of these right now, but there is a help menu. Just run EWF acquire without any, any extra commands and it will show you the help menu. Okay, but for now we're going to do uh, sudo EWF acquire and I'm gonna give it slash dev slash SDE. Now this is the disk that I want to image. This is our target disk. So dev SDE, okay. And then it's now saying, okay, we found it. The bus type is USB, that's correct. Uh, the vendor is SMI, model USB disk, okay. Serial number, okay. Um, so all of this we would want to record in our documentation. So I've already started, I've identified, I've uh, you know plugged the disk into a write blocker. The write blocker is plugged into my system. It identified as dev SDE. Um, uh, EWF Acquire recognized the, the disk and it gives me this information. So I want to make sure I document that now. So storage media information type device, media type removable, media size 4 gig, um, and bytes per sector 512. Okay. So now, uh, the image path and file name without, uh, extension. So I'm actually right now in the Media Joshua Storage Temp folder. So I'm going to copy that. Um, I've already pre-set up, uh, pre-planned out where I want to store everything. I'm going to put it this time in the temp folder that I'm already in. And I need to give it the disk image name. So I'm currently in this storage slash temp folder. So temp is a directory name. Then I want to give it another, um, uh, an actual file name. So in this case, I would need to give it something relevant to, um, to the disk itself. So let's say it's a kind of a, uh, uh, 
let's say 2017 to give it a date. It's a USB, it's gold, and uh, on the disc it actually says four gig. So I'm gonna name this 2017 USB gold four gig. I need to be able to identify, you know, with the physical device uh, with just an image name. So some, some way to tie this together. You could also include, for example, the case number, whoops. So um, I could call it you know, 4G and then maybe the case number is 001, something like that. So I would usually have um, you know, like case number, uh, date, and then some sort of identifier and the type of drive. And then if I know the size, the size as well. Okay, so something like that. Think about a, a file name that lets you understand very quickly what the image is. Don't make it a generic file name, otherwise um, you you might get uh, disk images confused between cases. For example, I would never in, in a real case put this in a temp folder. I would always put it in a special case folder dedicated to that individual case. Okay. Right. So next hit enter and then we've set the image path. Now with the case number itself and this information. So the first thing it's asking us for is where are we actually going to save the data to? So I'm saving the data to my computer. Um, now it's asking for the case number, and this information is case metadata that will be stored inside the expert witness format header. So basically the beginning of the disk image will have all of this extra metadata uh, that we're entering now. So I'm going to give it a case number of 001. Uh, description, uh, like I said, gold, 4 gig, USB um, from, you know, case, uh, I don't know, murder, something like that. Okay. Evidence number. So in this case, this is my first piece of, this is my first exhibit. So I'm going to give it an, an exhibit number of 001 um, and then examiner name, Joshua. Uh, you should put your full name, <laughs> by the way. Um, any extra notes? So again, you know, if this was related, whatever I knew about this, um, uh, this device, uh, I would have that information in my documentation, but I would also usually give uh, some notes as an indicator, um, not very, uh, very long notes, but at least some notes to kind of give some indication about what I know. Uh, the media type, this is a USB stick, so it's removable. Uh, media characteristics, logical or physical. Now remember, um, I said we wanted to do a physical disk image, so we want to do physical. Uh, use EWF file format, so we can choose here uh, EWF, which is the expert witness format, uh, SMART, which is a different format that I think is mostly used just in the US. Um, if it's even used anymore, I don't really know. Um, uh, FTK format, um, uh, basically they have their own format that also supports encryption. So I think EWF and FTK both support uh, compression and encryption. Um, and then the different versions of in-case, linen, um, and by default, it's using in case six. So we're just gonna keep the default for now. Compression method, um, deflate, I'm just gonna choose deflate. And then compression level, I'm gonna choose fast. Um, uh, compression is a pretty handy feature. I think that's why most people um, prefer to use these types of formats rather than raw, because raw, again, like bit by bit copy, it means that if you have a one terabyte hard drive, you have to copy one terabyte. Um, in this case, we're copying all of the data, but we're also compressing it. Um, so here we're going to do fast compression. So hopefully it's pretty quick. Um, start to acquire uh, at offset. So you can also set the offset in the disk where you actually want to acquire at. Um, and this is very similar to using DD. So in DD, you can also say, um, you know, where do you want to start? How much data do you want to copy? Um, so this is a pretty handy feature as well to be able to set the... Um, offset to acquire. I'm just going to start at the, I'm going to copy the entire disk. So I'm going to uh, start at zero and end at the end and evidence segments, evidence segment size uh, defaults to 1.4 gigabytes. And we are going to say, um, uh, let's do 10, 10 gigabits. Okay. Number of sectors, 512, uh, number of sectors to read at once. Let's do 64 just defaults. Uh, sectors to use error granularity. Uh, let's do, yeah, default again. 
retries whenever an error occurs. Um, so basically from zero to 255, uh, default is two, we'll set it at that. If you set the error retries um, really high, then imaging will take a very long time. Um, but you might all, you might be more likely to get the data, but it will take a lot longer. Uh, wipe sectors on read area. So uh, in this case, um, if there's a read area, what do we actually want to do with those sectors? Do we skip them? Do we do we default to zero? Do we default to one? And in this case, it's mimic in case like behavior. Um, so we are just gonna accept the default and do no. And then this gives us a, so zero sectors on read error. We're doing no. Um, and this gives us kind of an overview of our entire disk. Continue uh, acquisition with these values. Just hit yes. And then it should start going. Okay. So now it's copying and it will give you the status menu the entire time. Uh, so we started, uh, looks like 730 to acquire. And then uh, whenever this is done, I'll come back and, and talk a little bit more about the resulting files. Okay, so now that the data is finished copying, we can see that we got um, all of the all of the data, how long it took, um, the, the average copy rate, um, and then MD5 hash calculated over all of the data, um, uh, which will be stored in the expert witness format uh, footer. Um, if we look, let me get the uh, data here real quickly. If we look, we have a uh, single image because uh, I set the split size to be 10 gigabytes and this was only a four gigabyte um, image. Um, so we, now we have a four gigabyte E01 image or expert witness format image that we can load up into basically any forensic tool because most forensic tools support uh, the expert witness format. So um, it's pretty easy to use EWF Acquire to um, to analyze, the, or uh, sorry, to collect the data. Um, just while we're here, uh, we will also use EWF. Uh, so in the folder, I have the image that I've just collected. I'm going to use EWF Verify uh, against the disk image. Um, let's let's run it with without any commands first. So it also has um, uh, basically the same or some uh, extra options you can use. I'm just going to take the defaults because it's just going to treat it like a, a normal E01 image. Um, so let's do EWF verify. I probably have to be sudo. I have to be sudo because the um, uh, I don't have access to the image because I copied it as sudo. So the first thing I need to do is probably change the um, uh, permissions on the file, but we can do sudo, sudo EWF verify and then the image file that we just copied, hit enter, and then now it's going through and um, uh, rehashing everything so it takes the hash value from the uh, footer um, it hashes every all of the data again and then compares it and we get a success okay so that's how to use EWF acquire and EWF verify from Linux command line thank you very much if you like this video please subscribe for more